So I'd like to start first by acknowledging really that integrated landscape approaches to land management is not a new concept. It's uh, actually been widely documented within the literature since at least the early 1980s under various guises. And the past three decades have seen uh, a real growing recognition that, there, that the uh, traditional approaches, sectorial approaches to global challenges such as biodiversity conservation, poverty alleviation, deforestation are no longer working. And we need to find a more holistic, integrated uh, solution to these problems. Now previous approaches, like I said, they fall under various guises but they've been developed over the past three decades and despite initial promise, they failed to achieve a lot of key objectives and principle amongst these is combining sectors, so reconciling conservation and development targets. To give some examples, initiatives such as ecosystem based approaches or ICDPs uh, have been heavily criticised for being too heavily focused on conservation issues and therefore to the detriment of rural livelihoods. Conversely, you have integrated rural development approaches which have come under scrutiny for being too anthropocentric and therefore not addressing conservation issues sufficiently. The integrated landscape approach can be viewed as a refinement of these prior approaches and it can be broadly defined as a framework to address the increasingly widespread and complex environmental, social and political challenges that typically transcend traditional management boundaries. They aim to do this through the equitable and sustainable use of land and also help to strengthen measures to mitigate uh, and adapt to climate change. So they really are a multifaceted approach to land management. They aim to bring together multiple stakeholders across multiple sectors and work at various multiple scales. Now when you consider, them these, consider these approaches in this context, it's really quite difficult to argue against the merits of a landscape approach as a framework. You know, what we have here is a mechanism that could potentially help to alleviate poverty and do so in an equitable manner, conserve biodiversity, safeguard our forests, and also contribute to food production while also mitigating <coughs> climate change. <clears throat> we can also throw into that mix with the forthcoming sustainable development goals. If you look at the current working draft, they've outlined seven targets, key targets, and if you look at the terrestrial targets at least, the majority of them display significant overlap with the objectives of a landscape approach. So at this point we really have to question why is the landscape approach been relatively slow to gain policy traction and this has inevitably led to slow uptake on the ground. So what I'd like to do is address a few key issues that we've identified that have become perhaps barriers to implementation of the approach. So the first one is this issue of terminology. As I mentioned, there's been an exponential rise in the last three decades of uh, literature related to landscape approaches in one form or another. Now, this has led to a real significant institutional overlap in terms of the terminology used. So we have research groups at different corners of the globe, and they're using different definitions and even applying different terms that all mean the same thing. A recent study identified 78 different terms all alluding to landscape approaches. And perhaps what we've done is just created this sea of terminology that's not actually helping progress, but actually hindering engagement with policy makers, because as scientists we're failing to deliver a coherent message. The second issue really relates to the first one. How do we define a landscape approach? This has become increasingly problematic. We're dealing with a complex and dynamic system, and we acknowledge that perhaps what we, what we don't need is a universal, uh, universally agreed definition because a landscape approach as a framework perhaps has to be as dynamic as the landscape to which we're trying to apply it. Having said that, what we do need is a coordinated effort, with, at least within the research community, to build on the terminology that we have and try to provide at least a widely accepted definition of what we, what we think is a landscape approach and how we can deliver that message to policymakers. The third point is the issue of impact assessment. We seem to have built this real wealth of knowledge related to integrated landscape approaches to land management, but a lot of it is theory and conceptual frameworks. Do we really have a strong evidence base 
Do we have the case studies on the ground that have shown that these objectives are being met and these global challenges are being addressed? Related to this, do we currently have a toolkit that can assess a landscape approach as it's been implemented? Again, we acknowledge that a landscape approach does not need to have a specific end goal. It is more about the journey rather than the destination. But at points along this journey, we need to be having some metric, some measure of meeting objectives at short term at various stages along the journey. The final issue is the issue of governance. Again, it's a, a problematic area, and it's quite easy to sit here and say we demand a bottom-up approach and we need to engage with rural communities. But we all know from experience within forest governance that when you try to implement something in the field, having this bottom-up approach is, is very difficult to get all the stakeholders together and get them involved in the decision-making process. However, a landscape approach, we feel, demands this. In order to bridge national policies with local practices, there needs to be engagement with rural communities and we need to somehow work out how to empower these rural communities so they do have an active voice within the, within the decision making processes and also they're active in the management going forward of the approach. So in order to seek some answers or solutions to some of the issues that we've raised here, C4 are currently undertaking this systematic mapping process. We're following the uh, standard systematic review methodology We've captured as broad a range of literature as possible from a number of specialist databases and grey literature sources, individuals and organisations. And we collate the, the literature and apply inclusion and exclusion criteria and then filter this literature at various stages. So title screening, abstract screening and finally full text. And that will give us our final set of studies that we plan to map. The two key objectives that we hope to meet with this process uh, we, we first want to map the development of the theory of landscape approaches. So how the previous approaches are fed into the current iteration, the integrated landscape approach, and try to somehow decipher the, the existing terminology and provide that more coherent message. And then we can use this in the form of policy briefs to, uh, to deliver a, a better message to policymakers. The second objective is to identify and map geographically where and how these initiatives have been implemented in the field. So we would, we would ideally like to identify what stakeholder involvement there has been, what sector involvement there has been, how governance has been applied, and by doing this process we hope that we can then contribute to future research efforts to, to gain a greater understanding and display how landscape approaches can be implemented. We, our current process with the map, we're, we're working on a very short time frame, uh, but we've managed to complete our title and abstract screening. We started with 13, approximately 13,000 studies. After title screening, we've filtered that number down to 3,500. And as I said, we've recently completed abstract screening. We're, we're left with 382 <coughs> studies that we will uh, read at full text and extract our data from and we will be transferring that, di that data directly into an interactive map. And we hope to uh, reveal some results, some prelim preliminary results at the Global Landscapes Forum in Peru in December. And we will hope to unveil the map at this point as well. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, James, uh, for this uh I think it's, it's a nice overview and, and, and uh, I'm happy that you are undertaking this, this study for, or that CIFO is undertaking, is undertaking this study and I'm happy that you note, noted that there is a long history of landscape approaches and, and we should be tapping into that. Mm. Um, and I'm also happy that you, uh, that you mentioned the, the empowerment which is something that came up actually mm. last week when we had these events in New York and there were discussions on the landscape approach. And that was a point very strong, strongly made also by several people. That So somehow we have to figure out a, a way of finding a, what could look like a top-down approach, and put in putting up landscape, a, a landscape perspectives on development problems with a, a bottom-up approach where people come from the regions and the, and the villages and say, and state their point of view. So it's, I think that's one of the challenges we, we have there. Um, another point I, I would like to make, and I'm, I made also before, is um, that we need to find a way of making this 
operational. And that means finding a way of getting from the, the integration of the complexity to an outlet of uh, output of simplicity. Because we, we live in a sectoral world, we live in a levels world. People at the village level are not in the ministries. That's simply not the case. So they will have different challenges than those up there. And, and, and we need to find a way of bringing those outputs and breaking them down again and bringing them out to where they matter and how they matter in those different sectors and, and levels. Uh, ministries are separated. There is no Ministry of Landscapes. We don't have that. So, uh, but there's ministries of forestry, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of uh, Finance, of Economy, and so on, which need to do their cont their contribution to the to the solution. And we need to find a way of breaking what we find in an integrated approach down into sectoral solutions again, which then somehow reflect this integrated analysis and respond to it and contribute to an integrated outcome, but they're working basically sectorally and, and at levels. I think that's another challenge we have. Top-down and bottom-up approaches. Uh, it's been mentioned at a few meetings that we've had that, you know, would the approach work without either or? I think a landscape approach does require both. Uh, so yeah, I agree with that. And in terms of operationalizing the landscape approach, yeah, min at ministerial level, sure, they, they, it's quite convenient for them to sit in their boxes. But I think as a research community, what we can do is at least deliver the research that shows that it's a feasible approach. And I, I'm not entirely sure that we're doing that at the moment in terms of delivering case studies and research on the ground. Um, but it's going to take a lot of people basically being very brave you know, the donor community, the research community, working together and, and making these large-scale, long-term research projects happen. It's your review a scoping? Not a scoping work that you are doing? The review is a scoping? Yeah, so we, we, we did a scoping study to identify a set of search terms. And we have a set of search terms that we then apply to various databases. We've contacted uh, research institutions directly, spoken to individual experts, and we basically try to find as broad a range of material as we can possibly find, in, including grey literature material as well. Um, and then we screen at various levels the literature that we're, we're left with. And I said, yeah, you know, we started with 13,000, but obviously a lot of them aren't, aren't relevant to a landscape approach, but that's a, that's a factor of doing a systematic review. You have to start with a very broad set of search terms to make sure you are capturing all the material that you do want to capture and then you go through this quite time consuming process of screening at title, abstract and full text and we'll then be left with, well we have 382 full text that we have to read, take the data from and, and then we'll map that data accordingly. How many final studies we'll have in the, in the map I, I couldn't say at the moment. From experience it's generally 1% from the original search, so th the 13,000 would be left with 130. But sometimes you're left with nothing, I've seen from other systematic reviews. So. But that's not going to be the case with ours. I would recommend um, not to be too very wide in terms of the interpretation of the approaches to the concept. I, I, will, I would. I want, I want to incorporate into your review the whole issues of governance. Governance of landscapes is completely different issues, I think. has to be more, in, more into the legal literature, mm -hmm. where you, you might have this one. You might enrich your review by looking at theories of complexity. Looking at what, sorry? Theories of complexity, mm -hmm. because I think in a lot of what landscape approaches are missing there is a whole theoretical framework that's not there, and that's the problem with UNDP and its, its ecosystem-based adaptation approach that they are doing. It's, there's, the theory is not there, and I think your contribution could be very good.
if you look at the theories of complexity and provide some kind of theoretical framework for mm -hmm. landscape approaches. No? Governance, again, it's probably more into the legal aspect, legal literature, or mm -hmm. some other social political science mm -hmm. part of the literature. Yeah. It I mean, might be too wide to try to incorporate everything in one review. Yeah, I mean obviously we have to draw boundaries somewhere and um, when you do a systematic approach you have to follow a quite rigid methodology but at the stage we're at at the moment which is screening the full text we can choose what data we, cho we, we want to take from the text so we have a, a pretty large spreadsheet of various different variables that, that we hope to identify but we can actually be flexible at this stage so we can add or, or remove um, depending on what we find in the text but um, the, the governance issue isn't a specific key objective that we have it's more about mapping where and how they've been implemented and you know helping to deci decipher the terminology um, no just a quick easy one I think but just just from those studies that you've whittled down is that actually are they actually where the landscape approach has been applied or do you mean that are they conceptual papers as well that are working on defining yeah. it um, they're a mix of the two so um, yeah when when we're going through the screening of the full text we'll basically apply them to different folders one will be theoretical frameworks one will be case studies um, it's probably not a good idea to say right now but I'm gonna say it anyway but an emerging theme that we're or emerging pattern that we're starting to see is that there are very little examples of case studies within the tropics we are finding much more theoretical work but we haven't read the full text, so that might come back to bite me, I don't know.